It's a hard thing when a mother has only memories to hold. When I think of Joey as a baby, it's just what a cheerful little sweet baby he was. It's not much easier for a high school sweetheart. There still is a piece missing, and that's Joey. Kelly Marrera heard some of the last breaths ever taken by her longtime boyfriend, Joey Rivero. I talked to him on the phone. We ended up actually both falling asleep on the phone. And I woke up at about 6 in the morning, and I heard him snoring on the other line. So then I just hung up the phone and went back to sleep. But the affable, ambitious Arizona State University senior would never wake up. Roommates discovered his body hours later, lying in bed, no sign of life. We just couldn't have been more shocked, like a brick hitting you. What in the world? How could this be? Joey Rivero was murdered, not in a typical way, and not with the typical kind of lethal weapon. And in this case, the perpetrator is a 46-year-old mother of two, 460 miles away in Southern California. When Joey Rivero joined a fraternity at Arizona State, his mother April suffered the typical anxieties of any concerned parent sending her son off to school. That put me on high alert because of all the stories you read about the partying that goes on. Kelly was also an Arizona State student where she soon made a glaring observation. Every party I went to, people were, you know, crushing up painkillers and snorting them or just taking them and drinking. Pill popping has been part of the party curriculum for ages. But these days, scores of buzz-seeking students are chasing a far more potent high with a trifecta of highly addictive pills. It's called the Holy Trinity on the, the street. It's known as the cocktail because of the attributes when you take them, how high you can get. So the opiate gives you that sort of heroin high. The muscle relaxer boosts it, so it's an amplifier. And then your benzodiazepine creates a nice soft landing so that you don't crash when you're coming down off the opioid. Some, like Joey, were occasional users. Others were downright addicted. It was everywhere I went. It was a huge epidemic. Getting access to the highly regulated prescription pills was no easy task, unless you knew Dr. Lisa Sang, a Taiwan-born, American-educated doctor of internal medicine, who ran a modest clinic in this mini-mall in Roland Heights, California, near Los Angeles. We've talked to a lot of her patients and kids who said that this was the place to go. Sang ran the quintessential pill mill, and they came from miles around. There were lines out the door of 20-something kids waiting at this clinic in Roland Heights. It's kind of like wildfire. It just spread so quickly. Joey heard about Dr. Sang. He trekked across the Arizona desert to California, hoping to score pills for himself and his friends. Joey went in there and wasn't x-rayed. He wasn't even examined. She asked no questions about his medical history, and he just walked out of there with this unheard of combination and amount of drugs is just unbelievable to me. She gave him roxycodone, which is one of the highest Schedule II narcotics that you can prescribe. Sang threw in a muscle relaxer and an anxiety reducer. Three potent drugs, 120 pills, one visit. It was a prescription for death. His body was not tolerant of this combination at all. It didn't take much to kill him. Dr. Sang's cluttered little pill factory, investigators would learn, was in fact a house of addiction, overdose, and death. It's hard to fathom, but more than 12 young patients died under Sang's care in a three-year period of overdoses. One patient collapsed at her feet inside the clinic. 911, what's your emergency? We just need the ambulance to come. There's one patient possible overdose. Sang was not inclined to care about the ODs, just the dollars. During the period of time she was receiving notifications of deaths, her prescription writing went through the roof. Her state of mind appeared to be not only business as usual, but business is booming. State and federal investigators swooped in to take a hard look at the notorious Dr. Feelgood. They would find that Sang wrote an astonishing 27,000 prescriptions in just three years, raking in $5 million. Sometimes the encounter lasted minutes. 
before they walked out with a prescription. Sometimes three or four would go in the same exam room with her. When agents went undercover to catch Sang in the act. Hello, hi, how are you? How can I help you with today? I've been taking um, Oxy 80. If you want like other little bit of pain medicine, your choice is either rigor vicodin or um, Tylenol with coating. Well, it was like taking candy from a baby. On seven out of eight undercover operations, each undercover operator left with a prescription for a controlled substance. Investigators were stunned at the condition of Seng's clinic. There was smoke coming out of the bathroom. There were discarded needles in the trash can. People were drugged out of their mind. They were exchanging numbers and making deals in the reception area. In a stunning legal move, Sang was charged with three counts of second-degree malice murder under the theory that Sang knew her actions were so reckless people could die. At some point, we as a society have to say, we are going to hold you responsible for that person's death because you know what you're doing can kill them, and yet you choose to do it anyway. Of all the deaths under Sang's watch, the DA picked the three strongest cases directly linking Sang's prescriptions to the patient's overdose. Joey Rivero, Stephen Ogle, and Vu Nguyen were the three victims for which Lisa Sang would be on trial for murder. We knew it would be difficult. The circumstances of filing murder for someone who simply writes a prescription is a novel one. But Niederman was determined to prove Lisa Sang's recklessness amounted to murder. She wrote him a prescription for the very thing they're addicted to. She shoved them over the cliff. The pictures alone left indelible images in the minds of jurors. But it was the testimony of Sang's receptionist that helped underscore the doctor's callous disregard for her desperate patients. Her receptionist testified that she overheard doctors on the phone say, they're druggies, they can wait. Again. Sang's defense attorney, Tracy Green, argued it's the patient's responsibility not to abuse a doctor's prescription. No allegation in this case that any of these patients took it as prescribed. We all know they were adulterating it, binge drinking, or taking very large quantities. But Niederman insisted Sang not only unnecessarily over-prescribed, but deliberately gave pills to patients whom she knew were addicts. It's like someone coming to you and saying, I'm suicidal, and you handing them a gun and saying, now don't use this gun. In the end, it was a hard-fought victory for the district attorney. We the jury in the above entitled action finding defendant, Sho Ying, Lisa Sang, guilty of the crime. Guilty of 20 counts of over-prescribing and three counts of second-degree murder. All I was thinking about was the families in the audience. I hope that each guilty verdict softens their heart, gives them a little bit of justice. After reading an apology to her victims. I'm really terribly sorry for all of your loss. No words can really be properly described. And the sadness and remorse that I feel. Lisa Sang was sentenced to 30 years to life in prison. Crime Watch Daily spoke exclusively with Sang's distraught mother after the verdict. She did not want us to use her name. A family member translates. This is not law. This is not justice. This is not justice. Mm -hmm. this is not justice. You are killing her. But April Rivero is another mother with a broken heart. Doctors who are out there doing this need to wake up and realize that they are not going to get away with this. The Los Angeles County District Attorney's Office made history with the prosecution of Lisa Sang. It's the first time in the United States that a doctor has been convicted of murder for overprescribing medications. The verdict sent a chill throughout the medical profession. Many doctors claiming they fear ever writing another pain prescription for people who really need it. We are not witch hunters. We are not going out knocking on doctors' doors. For Niederman, it's the Lisa Sangs of the world who must be stopped in their tracks. I have prosecuted many murders during my career. Dr. Sang is the least regretful of her actions and probably has the hardest criminal heart I've come across.